Geothermal energy has the potential to generate large amounts of energy and use less land in the process. And the deeper we go, the better it gets. If we can go to deep geothermal energy, we'll get ten times the amount of power that current geothermal is able to do. The problem is, of course, we have to drill through a load of rock, and that is an extremely challenging job. And that's where MIT's fusion technology and Quay's engineering come in. Quay's is using MIT's fusion-powered lasers to melt the rocks, and it's just raised $21 million to do exactly that, and it's been backed by Mitsubishi, amongst others. The Earth is a big ball floating around on molten rock, and it's about 6,000 degrees centigrade at the centre of the Earth, which is slightly hotter than the surface of the Sun. And the idea is that this is leftover residual heat from the formation of the Earth and radioactive decay under very high pressures. So, there's an awful lot of heat down there. Geothermal energy is immensely attractive to people because it is just there. Geothermal engineers apparently like to call it the sun under our feet. Now, it's been estimated that if we were to draw off 0.1% of that geothermal energy, it'd be enough energy for us to run every energy application that human beings have, want, or ever going to need for the next 20 million years. So that's a lot of energy. Now, I suppose the other concern people won't have is that if you're drilling holes into the Earth's crust, you might crack it like an egg. And there was a film made in the 1980s about that, but Generally, it's accepted that's not going to happen. Now, geothermal energy is already here, and there are four main types of it. The first one is the one that we're really aware of, and courtesy of Yellowstone and Old Faithful. It's where there exists hot springs under pressure quite near the surface of the Earth, and they blow steam and hot water straight out the ground and up into the air. And you see those in places like California and Iceland. But they're really extremely rare and very difficult to get hold of, so it's only those lucky few who can heat their swimming pools across the whole town, like Iceland does. You have another type called enhanced geothermal. Enhanced geothermal is where you essentially drill down till you find a spongy bit of rock, inject some water and let that steam form. Then you drill another hole and you extract it from there. So it's very similar to natural geothermal resources, it's just you're drilling the hole. Then there's another type called in advanced geothermal energy. This is actually really similar to air pumps. What you, uh, I'm sorry, heat exchange pumps and uh, air heat exchange pumps. You drill a hole, Put a lot of pipes down there, wash some fluid of some kind or other, either a binary or an individual fluid, that gets hot, take some of the heat, bring it back up, heat exchanger, extract the heat from that. So those are the three predominant types that are currently in existence. And there is one more, which has been on the drawing board or been worked at every now and then for ages, and that is super hot rock geothermal, and that involves drilling through the mantle till you get to the hot bit. And although we've got a ton of experience with oil and gas drilling, that is far more challenging than it sounds. However, the Russians tried it in the 1970s in the Kola borehole, but they found when they got a little bit down the temperature, actually it wasn't 100 degrees like they expected, it was 200 degrees centigrade, and that effectively ruined the drill head. When you're drilling holes like this, lots of rubbish comes in from the sides when you're going through porous rocks, and you have to line it. And when you line it with a cement or a vitreous lining to protect the mechanical drill, it gets very much more expensive very much more quickly the deeper you go. Of course, the Earth's crust is anywhere between 3 kilometres and 47 kilometres thick. If you run a craton, then it's 47 kilometres thick. Incidentally, cratons are the ancient rock of the world. They're the first rock to ever form, and also the deepest rock. There are actually only five of them in the world, and the base of cratons is where you find diamonds. But anyway, if you're trying to drill, you don't really want to go that far. The Germans tried it in the 1980s, and they tried to go in the bottom of the sea because the Earth's crust is thinnest at the bottom of the sea, but of course that brings all its own problems. And both of these attempts were abandoned, and the Kohler attempt is now just a capped off wellhead that's um, rusting away ignominiously at the border of Finland and Russia. It still remains, however, 
a much desired proposition, even if it is a little at the fringe of geothermal energy. The challenge is being really some way of drilling that hole deep enough and cheaply enough without completely destroying your well equipment. Now, the gyrotron is usually used in nuclear fusion, where it's used to generate the impossibly high heat needed to make fusion happen. But MIT played with it for about four years or so and decided that it was the ideal drilling machine because you could have it in um, very high powers, megawatt powers. It was easily directable. It could drill very, very quickly into rock, something like 100 times faster. And it actually formed its own self-sealing tube as it went down. So it had all these possibilities. After four years of work, MIT span it off, their plasma research fusion group span it off into a company called Quez. And Quez began operations in 2018. Now the objective of Quez is to drill 20 kilometers down into the earth where the temperature expected to be around about 500 degrees centigrade at very high pressures. And there they're hoping to create what's called supercritical water. Supercritical water is currently used in uh, coal plants, so it's something that people are used to using in industrial terms, and it has a quantum leap in energy density from normal water that you just boil. So the plant uses supercritical water, and they're expecting when they begin operations to be able to drill to that depth in something like 100 days. The abandoned Russian effort, of course, took two years and they still didn't get there. Quays plan on using the 21 million to select their pilot sites and get on with it. Now, the challenge of any project is getting off the bench and getting support. So with support from people like Mitsubishi, this has taken one giant leap forward. And what the CEO is saying is they want to make deep geothermal indispensable in the energy mix for the 21st century and they're certainly working very hard towards that so i thought i would keep you up to date that's the press release that came out a couple of days ago hope you enjoyed the video thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe